let's go into obstructions of outflow. Now you have three main obstructions of outflow here. And technically, obstructing any outflow inside the heart is an obstruction of the outflow. So you have two main exits of the heart. You have your pulmonary artery here. Now your pulmonary artery shoots out blood from that right ventricle through the pulmonary artery into the lungs, right? So when we have a obstruction of outflow in your pulmonic valve, this is the obstruction of outflow, right? So <laughs> when you have an obstruction of outflow in your aortic valve, this is an obstruction of outflow from this um, aortic valve here. And when you have a clamping or a narrowing, almost like you're squeezing a straw in your aorta primarily, not the doors of exit, but more of the kind of driveway, that's what's called your coarctation of the aorta. Okay, So coarctation is a European word, I believe it's a Latin word, that means to narrow. So, obstruction of outflow here. We have the coarctation of the aorta. You also have your pulmonic stenosis, which is just your pulmonic valve is getting uh, more narrowed. And you also have your aortic stenosis here. Now, all of them include heart failure, okay? Because they're not letting out blood. When any time you have a retention of fluid in the heart and cause more pressure and back up on the heart, it becomes harder for the heart to pump. That's what we have heart failure. So with coarctation, your patients have a narrowing portion of the aorta, almost like we're squeezing a straw. And it's usually near the aortic arch, and that's where the aortic arch is. Then you have your arterioles that go up to your carotids and perfuse your brain. So you have decreased blood flow to the lower parts of the body, as well as more shunting of blood to the arms and the head. So you're going to have less pulses in the legs, stronger pulses in your brachial for your pediatric patients, as well as... In your older patients, you'll have dizziness and headaches and maybe even faints and nosebleeds because there's so much pressure in the upper portions of the body. So just remember, there's going to be decrease of blood flow to the lower portions of the body. There'll be increase in blood flow to the upper portions, okay? So... What your doctor will do is we'll do four blood pressures on the extremities. And I actually had to do this when I worked in the hospital at the pediatric hospital in Orange County. So the doctor, a great, great uh, pediatric physician, really good guy. He's like, hey, uh, just go ahead and do four blood pressures on all the extremities. And I'm like, what? Really? Why do we have to do that? So I just did it. And what he was looking for was higher pressure in the upper extremities than the lower extremities. If there was higher pressure in the upper extremities, he would have probably diagnosed or done more diagnostic studies to find out if this patient had a narrowing or a correctation of the aorta. Okay? So for your pulmonic stenosis here, same heart failure, but your right ventricle has increased workload, as well as a backing up of blood in this right ventricle causes ventricular hypertrophy happening in that right ventricle. So if we look at it here again, you have a hypertrophy, a bigger stretching, bearing down at the seams. And you're like, yeah, so what? Like, is that a problem? Like, yeah, it is. <laughs> We're trying to get this deoxygenated blood 
to the lungs to get oxygen. Guys, we don't want a very stretched out heart. Then we're not going to be able to pump blood back into the heart to get reoxygenated. How we're going to go broke. We're going to be having no money, no O2. Your patient will uh, suffer respiratory complications here because there's no oxygen. So your body's trying to get oxygen. Your body's pretty much oxygen deprived. So what's the biggest oxygen deprivation sign and symptom? Cyanosis. And then you're like, what's cyanosis? That's bluing, whoops, bluing of the lips. Or that's a late sign, really. But you can have pale skin. Big thing is um, clubbing of the fingers. That shows that you're oxygen deprived. And just like we said, cardiac murmurs, that just extra beat or the backflow of blood usually happens with all of your cardiac uh, congenital heart failure patients. Next is your aortic stenosis. Same heart failure. Increased resistance this time, though, in your left ventricle. So it's kind of the same thing, but just on the other side. The difference with this, though, is we have oxygen. Woohoo! We have the money. Oh, yeah. So you have increased resistance in the left ventricle. This left ventricle now has a bigger hypertrophy. It's probably going to stretch out, and then we might have heart failure. Okay? So we'll have a faint pulse, because think about it here. Let me bring in. Your right side of the heart pumps where? Well, pumps to the lungs. Fantastic. That's all gravy. Okay, what does your left side of the heart pump to? Well, it pumps to the body, right? Pumps to the body. So, if we're having trouble pumping to the body, what's going to possibly be decreased? Well, your pulses, woohoo, your faint pulses. You're probably going to have faint pulses. Not your problem, you will have faint pulses. Your patient will have faint pulses. So if your test says, hey, your patient has uh, increased blood pressures on their extremities or increased pulses on the upper extremities, is that this? No, you're going to have faint pulses, okay? Increased pulses on the upper extremities is probably going to be the corrication of the aorta. Okay, you're going to have an increased heart rate. The body's going to try to pump harder and faster to get what it has inside of this ventricle. But we have a narrowing of the exit doors. So it's going to pump harder, faster. We have less blood flow going to the body, right? So we're going to have faint pulses. And we're going to have hypotension, decreased blood pressure, because you have less blood flow to the body. Decreased BP, decreased, well, not decreased, but faint pulses. So the body tries to compensate by um, pumping faster. That's why we get tachycardia, hypotension, okay? Next is you have decreased feeding, because why? You have that oxygen, remember that oxygen? Oh yeah, that guy. That oxygen is the money, and that oxygen is just sitting there. And it's getting, trying to pump out. And it's trying to get to the body. Now when, it's oxygen, when your patient's oxygen deprived in the body, we have decreased desire for feeding. So we want to teach your patients not a lot of activity, not a lot of crying either. Well, crying with any of these. There's no crying. Don't cry. Yeah, so no crying. Because crying expends a lot of oxygen. So cardiac murmur, again, just like everyone else. So what are we going to do as nurses? Well, the biggest thing that we have to do is surgical repair. We'll do a patch. Well, not a patch, I'm sorry. They will do an opening. They'll open up these vessels here. They'll open up the aorta. Then provide a patent um, exits, patent outflow. 
So what are we going to monitor for as nurses here? As nurses, we monitor for heart failure signs and symptoms. Your heart failure, because we have extra pressure being put on those ventricles, all that backflow and pressure being pushed, okay? We can monitor for your triple A, which is your um, aortic aneurysm or a rupturing of the aorta. Now that's specifically talking about your corrication of aorta, because all that backflow and pressure right there. Um, every single one's going to have a cardiac murmur, so I'm going to monitor for that. But that's normal, pretty much. Um, hypotension is a big one. Heart failure, like we just said. Cyanosis, decreased oxygenation, as well as hypoxemia. So, we're going to have to do small, frequent meals, alternate rest periods, have the patient um, cluster the care or cluster activities together. So, not always being active. No crying. So, a lot of the same interventions because this is, it's really the same thing. Heart failure and oxygen deprivation. So, other than the ones I just mentioned and all the other ones, um, it's pretty much this, almost the same plan of care, just the surgeries are a little bit different.